Keep before your eyes from day to day death and exile and all things that seem terrible, but death most of all, and then you will never set your thoughts on what is low and will never desire anything beyond measure. Chapter 22 If you set your desire on philosophy, you must at once prepare to meet with ridicule and the jeers of many who will say, Here he is again, turned philosopher. Where has he got these proud looks? Nay, put on no proud looks, but hold fast to what seems best to you, in confidence that God has set you at this post. And remember that if you abide where you are, those who first laugh at you will one day admire you, and that if you give way to them, you will get doubly laughed at. Chapter 23 If it ever happened to you to be diverted to things outside, so that you desire to please another, know that you have lost your life's plan. Be content, then, always, to be a philosopher. If you wish to be regarded as one, too, show yourself that you are one, and you will be able to achieve it. Chapter 24 Let not reflections such as these afflict you. I shall live with honor, and never be of any account. For if lack of honor is an evil, no one but yourself can involve you in evil any more than in shame. Is it your business to get office, or to be invited to an entertainment? Certainly not. Where, then, is the dishonor that you talk of? How can you be of no account anywhere, when you ought to count for something in those matters only which are in your power, where you may achieve the highest worth? But my friends, you say, will lack assistance. What do you mean by lack assistance? They will not have cash from you, and you will not make them Roman citizens. Who told you that to do these things is in our power, and not dependent upon others? Who can give to another what is not his to give? Get them, then, says he, that we may have them. If I can get them and keep my self-respect, honor, magnanimity, show the way, and I will get them. But if you call on me to lose the good things that are mine, in order that you may win things that are not good, look how unfair and thoughtless you are. And which do you really prefer? Money? or a faithful, modest friend. Therefore, help me to rather to keep these qualities, and do not expect from me actions which will make me lose them. But my country, says he, will lack assistance, so far as lies in me. Once more, I ask, what assistance do you mean? It will not owe colonnades or baths to you. What of that? It does not owe shoes to the blacksmith or arms to the shoemaker. It is sufficient if each man fulfills his own function. Would you do it no good if you secured to it another faithful and modest citizen? Yes. Well, then, you will not be useless to it. What place, then, shall I have in the city? Whatever place you can hold while you keep your character for honor and self-respect. But if you are going to lose these qualities in trying to benefit your city, what benefit, I ask, would you have done her when you attained to the perfection of being lost to shame and honor? Chapter 25 has someone had precedence of you at an entertainment or a levy, or been called in before you to give advice? If these things are good, you ought to be glad that he got them. If they are evil, do not be angry that you do not get them yourself. Remember that if you want to get what is not in your power, you cannot earn the same reward as others unless you act as they do. How is it possible for one who does not haunt the great man's door to have equal shares with one who does, or one who does not go in his train equality with one who does, or one who does not praise him with one who does. You will be unjust, then, and insatiable, if you wish to get these privileges for nothing without paying their price. What is the price of a lettuce? An obol, perhaps? If then a man pays his obol and gets his lettuces, and you do not pay and do not get them, do not think you are defrauded. For as he has the lettuces, so you have the obol you do not give. The same principle holds good, too, in conduct. You were not invited to someone's entertainment? Because you do not give the host the price for which he sells his dinner. He sells it for compliments. He sells it for attentions. Pay him the price, then, if it is to your profit. But if you wish to get the one, and yet not give up the other, nothing can satisfy you in your folly. What, you say? You have nothing instead of the dinner? Nay, you have this. You have not praised the man you do not want to praise. You have not had to bear with the insults of his doorstep. Chapter 26 
It is in our power to discover the will of nature from those matters on which we have no difference of opinion. For instance, when another man's slave has broken the wine cup, we are very ready to say at once, such things must happen. Know then that when your own cup is broken, you ought to behave in the same way as when your neighbor's was broken. Apply the same principle to higher matters. Is another's child or wife dead? Not one of us but would say, such is the lot of man. But when one's own dies, straightway one cries, Alas, miserable am I. But we ought to remember what our feelings are when we hear it of another. Chapter 27 As a mark is not set up for men to miss it, so there is nothing intrinsically evil in the world. Chapter 28 If anyone trusted your body to the first man he met, you would be indignant, but yet you trust your mind to the chance corner, and allow it to be disturbed and confounded if he revile you. Are you not ashamed to do so? Chapter 29 In everything you do, consider what comes first and what follows, and so approach it. Otherwise, you will come to it with a good heart at first, because you have not reflected on any of the consequences, and afterwards, when difficulties have appeared, you will desist to your shame. Do you wish to win at Olympia? So do I, by the gods, for it is a fine thing. But consider the first steps to it, and the consequences, and so lay your hand to the work. You must submit to discipline, eat to order, touch no sweets, train under compulsion, at a fixed hour, in heat and cold, drink no cold water, nor wine, except by order. You must hand yourself over completely to your trainer as you would to a physician, and then when the contest comes, you must risk getting hacked, and sometimes dislocate your hand, twist your ankle, swallow plenty of sand, sometimes get a flogging, and with all this, suffer defeat. When you have considered all this well, then enter on the athlete's course, if you still wish it. If you act without thought, you will be behaving like children, who one day play at wrestlers, another day at gladiators, now sound the trumpet, and next strut the stage. Like them, you will be now an athlete, now a gladiator, then orator, then philosopher, but nothing with all your soul. Like an ape, you imitate every sight you see, and one thing after another takes your fancy. When you undertake a thing, you do it casually and half-heartedly, instead of considering it and looking at it all round. In the same way some people, when they see a philosopher and hear a man speaking like Euphrates, and indeed, who can speak as he can? wish to be philosophers themselves. Man, consider first what it is you are undertaking. Then look at your own powers and see if you can bear it. Do you want to compete in the pentathlon or in wrestling? Look to your arms, your thighs, see what your loins are like. For different men are born for different tasks. Do you suppose that if you do this, you can live as you do now? Eat and drink as you do now? Indulge desire and discontent just as before? Nay. You must sit up late, work hard, abandon your own people, be looked down on by a mere slave, be ridiculed by those who meet you, get the worst of it in everything, in honor, in office, in justice, in every possible thing. This is what you have to consider, whether you are willing to pay this price for peace of mind, freedom, tranquility. If not, do not come near. Do not be like the children, first a philosopher, then a tax collector, then an orator, then one of Caesar's procurators. These callings do not agree. You must be one man, good or bad. You must develop either your governing principle or your outward endowments. You must study either your inner man or outward things. In a word, you must choose between the position of a philosopher and that of a mere outsider. Chapter 30. Appropriate acts are in general measured by the relations they are concerned with. He is your father. This means you are called on to take care of him, give way to him in all things, bear with him if he reviles or strikes you. But he is a bad father. Well, have you any natural claim to a good father? No, only to a father. My brother wrongs me. Be careful then to maintain the relation you hold to him, and do not consider what he does, but what you must do if your purpose is to keep in accord with nature. For no one shall harm you without your consent. 
You will only be harmed when you think you are harmed. You will only discover what is proper to expect from neighbor, citizen, or praetor if you get into the habit of looking at the relations implied by each.